First of all, Van, how yeah. are you? I'm very good, man. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Good. Um, what I want to start with is, what was your first reaction of moving to Wales? Moving to Wales when I was younger? Uh, yes. I, w I was too young to even remember, so okay, I didn't okay. really have a, have a say in it. But um, I've, just, I've just got a house with, um, well, a cottage with my best mate, Larry, who's like our guitar tech, so we just got a place together. So I'm pretty excited at the moment to move, you know. Okay, this is, so, um, but I, I read somewhere that um, you kind of wi wanted to escape that, that small town thing. And that, I'm, I'm going to pronou pronounce this wrong, but Glandudno? Glandudno, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, we grew up in a small town, so everything, everything was very, you know, like, um, you kind of, everybody knew everybody's business and everything mm -hmm. was, all the songs are about that, basically trying to escape, you know what I mean? Like trying to get out, and I think that's the case with everybody, you know what I mean? Everyone I've spoke to since, all, they all, you always want to get away from home, you know what I mean? I guess it's because you've been there all your life and you want to experience something new, so, yeah. It's, a, it's amazing, you know, Landed was an amazing place to come home to. Like, if you ever get to go, it's just fucking chill, you know what I mean? Everyone just chills out, it's meant, but, uh, yeah, it, it was just there, uh, we wanted to just, do was, uh, there's no scene for our, our kind of music there, you know what I mean? So it's kind of tough for us as a band. So the reason why mainly I wanted to get out of there, apart from everybody, you know, knowing every single ounce of my business, like, um, it was the other reason was because we wanted to get on tour, you know what I mean? And really, you know, travel around the world, so. So uh, was it difficult then to get into music there because there was no scene, because there, even finding bandmates, people yeah. to play with? Uh, not well. The, the only the only lads I knew were the lads who were in the band. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, you know, it was that was it. It was just you had no options. So we weren't we weren't close or anything like that. We weren't best mates. It was just like they were the only people we knew. We became friends over this really, and we became enemies over this and fallen out and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it was it was uh, it was tough, man. You know what I mean? It was tough, but it was good. It was good. It was good for us because it was a blessing as well as a curse because. It taught us a lot of discipline because it made us drive quite a f like a, everywhere was a long way for us. So it, so when we started driving to Scotland and stuff like that, which is you know like five six hours drive, um, you know it trained us up really well. So now when we go to America and we do like nine hour drives after every gig, it's nothing to us. It's just like going to shop for fags. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's easy. So it's like um, you know it's good. It's good. It, it blessed us and, and cursed us at the same time. It's good. What what were those initial gigs like? The the early ones yeah. like well. They were, we used to play in like uh, pubs and like beer gardens and hotels and that just to get our money. Like, so was, mm. we used to pay, have to pay for everything ourselves. We didn't have any like help uh, like from labels or anything mm. like that at the start. So we, it was just, it was just a, we used to play from Monday to Friday in pubs, playing our own songs like Beatles covers and stuff, and like trying to, you know, basically that was our day jobs. And then we just put all the money back into the band and then sleep in the van, just tour for the weekends, and that was it. But it was good, man. It was. Uh, it's good, those are the days, you know what I mean? They're the days that, I guess, if we're living in mansions and jacuzzis and all that stuff, then they're the ones we're going to be like, do you remember when we used to fucking do that? You know, we grafted for it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm really proud of the way we did it. And, like, we weren't... A lot of bands now in England, they were all going to number one and all that stuff. They're all, you know, on the front of magazines and got a massive million-pound campaign behind them and just throwing money at them, getting them on all TV shows and, you know, all that kind of thing. We didn't do any of that. We just, we just got in a van and toured, and then our band got the, the way it is because people were coming to see us and then going to their friends, you've got to see this band, you've got to see this band and it was just like just like a big gang of mates. We feel like we're best mates to everyone who's coming to see us still, you know what I mean? So it's like wasn't any of that, wasn't wasn't fabricated. We really worked hard for it and I'm proud of I'm proud of the lads, I'm proud of me and I'm proud of I'm proud of the fact that people are really passionate about it, you know what I mean? It makes me a really proud lad that does and you know so do you think it's? I assume then it's. It's. Do you think it's for for any band? It's important to to pay your dues in a way before. Yeah, I I do. I think if you want to stick around, then you've you've got to. Yeah, but you know, I I don't know. You know, like because there's a lot of bands who who have just been thrown up into stardom and just managed to do it. You know, at the end of the day, if somebody's good enough to make really good songs, then mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what background they came from, really, does it? You know, what I mean, it doesn't matter how how they became successful. Like if you go on the X Factor. Oh, I don't know if you're that X Factor over here, but like if you go on a talent show and win it, and next minute you're a pop star, at the end of the day, you had to win that show, you know what I mean? So um, it was just so happened for us, we didn't have any way in. We didn't have any, we didn't, I, I would have took it, you know what I mean? If, if my next door neighbor worked for a record label, I'd be like, get me a deal, you know what I mean? But we didn't have any of that, so we mm. were just like, we had to go and find these people and really go, you know, we're the fucking 
we're really good. You know, take a risk on us. We've got loads of tunes and that. So like, it was um, it was it was harder for us. You know what I mean? It, but, but I don't I don't hold that. I don't think we worked any harder than any other band. I just think we did it a way that was, you know, more like kind of. You need a lot more inside you to do it. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people have. A lot of people in my band have. You know what I mean? Like we've 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 already like we've changed lineups and stuff like that a few times. A lot of people, a lot of people in bands can't. I know loads of bands who give up because it's too too much too much strain. You know what I mean? You don't get to see your girlfriend. You don't get to go home. You don't get to, you know, have any money. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're skint. You're living in a van. You wake up every day with a cold. It's, it's fucking rough, man. But it's good if you've got a good. If you've got at least good, like my best mates on tour of us, Larry, like he's my best mate, and like if you've got somebody like that beside you every day, and you wake up and you feel like shit, and you look at him and he's just got a funny face, you know what I mean? You're all right. So, just um, it's just all about making sure you you switched on, you know what I mean, and like making sure you you care enough about it. So, but to, but, to make a, a step like that, to make uh, a sacrifice like that, yeah. it, it requires a lot of confidence, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, in, the, in, in your music, but also in yourself, in, in the ability to make it. Yeah, it does. Like I guess it does. It's um, yeah. Well, I, I I believed in it since the start. Like I I believed in it. Like when I was a kid, I used to think I could be you know anything I wanted mm -hmm. to be. Like I, my mum and dad raised me like very very like I was just raised on love, man, and everything. Everything. If you work, they were just like if you work hard enough for anything, you'll get it. You know what I mean? They were really really like really fucking good mum and dad, man. Like and they used to say. They used to just say to me like, you know, if I got kicked out of school, so as soon as I got kicked out of school, they were like, do not embarrass this family. You know what I mean? Like, make sure you fucking whatever you're gonna do, go for it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, shit, I've got to fucking make a go of this because I look like a right dick if I don't. And like, what what's their opinion on the band? What, they what love they're... it. They're dead proud, man. Like, my dad, my dad thinks he doesn't think there's another band that can write. He, when he puts the radio on, he doesn't think that anybody comes near to us. You know what I mean? Like, and he's always like, am I being biased because I'm your dad? You know what I mean? But he just thinks we write the best songs, and he thinks we've got. He just thinks we've got. He was there, you know what I mean. He drove us. I was 14, 15, and my dad used to drive me to gigs. He drove me to Germany, like, and he drove the whole day. It took him a day to drive, and he had like a, 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 tooth, a toothbrush in one pocket and like a what was it? Like a can of de like a deodorant or like a you know clean right. socks in the next. And he drove the whole night. We didn't sleep, and because he, he used to drive us because we weren't old enough, and I had to sack him in the end because I was like, I'm going to kill my own daddy. He doesn't sleep, you know what I mean? Mm. So um. He's dead, he's dead proud, man. He's, he believes in me, and like I, I believe in me, and I believe in the boys, and that's it, really. Like you know what I mean? Like there's a lot, there's a lot of confidence in this band because we know that we've got. I, you know, I don't know, if, I don't know how. I, I think the songs are great, but I don't know if it's you know, if it's anything to do with any of that. What I believe in it, the what thing I believe in is that the people, like the people who are into the band, I believe in them, and like I've seen, I've seen the people. We played Leeds and Reading last week, and I've seen those people. They, they fucking tore the tent up. You know what I mean? They wanted to blow the place up, it was mental, so like I believe in that, so yeah. Hello, oh, you're alright, okay. sorry, you're alright, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I thought it was the, the press. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, so so then then, what does it do to you that your album is, is, is out uh, due in, I believe, 10 days or so? Yeah. But you already have a, a tour sold out in the UK. Yeah, it's uh, it's mad, mate, it's absolutely mad, but you know, um, we're uh, it's just funny for us because, like, we're you know, like I'm I'm 22 and I've got an album out next week and it's just funny, man. We're just enjoying it and just having a laugh and like every time something like that, like we just found out the tour was sold out. Like it's uh, it's just it's just class, man. It's just class. Like you know, to be able to play a tour without having an album out is amazing. That's what I was saying to you though before. Like our people, the people who believe in us, believe in the band, they really believe in us. You know what I mean? They really care about it and like people just want to go have a good night out. That's it, really. Like that's how I see it. And like when we're playing gigs now. I'm just like, we've got to give these people a good time. Like, I used to go see bands when I was a kid. I was like, used to come away from the gig thinking, fuck, that was my best night of my life, you know what I mean? Mm. Put my arm, I used to go with my cousin, I used to put my arm around him and fucking be like, mate, that was class. Do it again. And we used to live, I used to live about an hour away from him, so I used to go up see him, then we'd go to the gig and like, uh, you know, that's all it's, it's about, that, you know what I mean? Meeting, meeting your girlfriend at gigs and meeting people. I just like the feeling the way a thousand people in this room, no matter what, your views on life are, you all love this one band, mm. you know what I mean? And our, our, it's just our fans are mint, you know what I mean? They're just class, so it's just like, um, you know, just exciting. Yeah. Album out next week, 22, I've got a puppy. <laughs> it's mint, everything's great. And has your appraisal, uh, in terms of the live show, have your, has your approach changed over the years? Um, 
it? Yeah. yeah it has. Like we, I remember, like we had to, we had to try to change it because we now we're now we're playing to like a 1,600 people as opposed to like 600. You know, like before. When, when I went playing to like 60 people, say, I could talk to every person in the crowd, and then we went to like 600, I could talk to one or two people in the crowd, but now it's, instead of going, hi, hello, how are you doing, what's your name? It's more like, all right, London, how are you lot doing, you know what I mean, like the whole place. So it's like, it's very much like, um, I've had to change the way I act on stage, but it's, it's hard, it's harder for me now, because I kind of like being close and interacting with people, and it's hard now that you've got a barrier and loads of security and stuff. But, you know, so do you miss those intimate gigs? Yeah, yeah, big time. Miss them massively. But we make at the end of the day, like we want to be, we want to go to arenas. So you've got, you've got, to, you've got to lose them. But we, we're, we're gonna keep, we're gonna try and keep that as well. Like we're, do, we're doing. See, we've got a gig in Manchester in November. We're playing to like 1,600 people, and it's sold out in like a week. And, right. um, but in the, the afternoon of that day, <laughs> we're playing to 30 people. We're gonna do like a secret gig kind of thing, like for a radio station over there. So yeah, it's. Um, we're, we're very like um, keen to keep that tightness, you know what I mean, with our, with our fans, you know. Well, you mentioned this connect, uh, connection with the fans. What are the type of things? Is, is there maybe one thing that, that somebody told you that really sticks out? Uh, well, I remember, like, I remember because we did a tour and I remember doing it and saying to everybody on stage, come up, we'll meet you at the bar afterwards, we'll all have a drink and tell us what tell us what you want on the album and what you don't want on the album. And people, like, lads would come up to me and they'd be like, please don't put that on the album, it's fucking shit. You know what I mean? Or please put that on the album, it's an absolute tune. So, like, our fans picked our track listing, you know what I mean? We did a tour and that tour decided what we were going to play. We played, like, 30 songs between the tour and they, everybody picked the songs, you know what I mean? So, um, it was, um, it was basically just picked on, based on fans, you know what I mean? Everything, all, all our band is based on fans, everything we've done is based on the people who's leaving it, you know?